Morning, gang. It's Thursday, the 3rd of... No, Thursday, the 4th of May, 2017. A warm welcome along to this morning's United Kingdom talk. Now, we haven't been with you live for four whole days. How have you coped? Busy, busy, busy. Very, very busy I've been, boys and girls. That's why I haven't been here. Been quite busy uh, at the moment. Now, what is wrong with you all? You're all going into meltdown this morning. For God's sake, man. Something's happened at the palace. People are going mad. Mad, dear. Well, we don't know what's happened yet. Uh, but it, it's almost... The way people are talking about it on Facebook this morning, it's almost as though you want something bad to have happened. You're so desperate for something bad to happen all the time, aren't you? What is wrong with you this morning? It's probably nothing. There has been uh, uh, news floating around in this morning's... Now, oh. What the hell's that? Push that button. Get rid of that, thank you. Uh, there has been news all over the papers this morning. In this morning's Telegraph, now you will notice over the coming weeks, boys and girls, I am going to take my news sources from other, from, from different newspapers because we've been concentrating a lot on the Super Soraway Daily Mail. One of my favourite newspapers. That's the only reason I use that one, OK? Uh, but uh, uh, the bloke on LBC, who I like very much and I do appreciate his programmes, says that we should get our news sources from lots of different papers and news organisations. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to become even more BBC. The globe will be turning slowly soon. Oh, yes. Anyway, in this morning's Daily Telegraph. Oh, my. Have you ever tried to read the Daily Telegraph on the train? You know, oh, God. Oh, oh, dropped a piece. Oh, they're a nightmare, dear. I think they should make all newspapers that small size. It's very, very annoying, especially when there's someone in front of you with the telegraph, you know, and there's a fit person behind that person that you can't see because this bastard's reading the blooming telegraph or something like that. God. Anyway, in the telegraph this morning, it says. The Queen's most senior aides have summoned her entire household to an emergency meeting this morning at Buckingham Palace. Bach Palace. The Lord Chamberlain, the most senior officer of the royal household, and Sir Christopher Get It, Get Get It, Get It, Get It, Get G E I D T, Get It, get, get that would be one of those words I trip over when I'm doing a quiz. I'm not. <laughs> Foreign names I'm very, very bad at, and long words. <clears throat> yes. Private Secretary will address staff from royal residences as far afield as Bar Moral. Well, I hope he's got a loud voice then. How's he going to do that? Hello? Can you hear me up there? Is it true that Bar, Mo Bar Moral uh, wants to become an independent state along with the rest of Scotland now? Is that, is that what's happening? Uh, social media immediately went into overdrive, speculating about the death of a senior royal. Oh, for God's sake, man. Why can't you just wait for the announcement and be done with it? You're so desperate to, for something bad to happen, aren't you? You really are. The Telegraph understands neither scenario is likely. With sources war 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 weaning, warning, there is no cause for concern or hysteria. No hysteria, please. Is that a new game? Not hysterectomy. Hysteria. Pay attention to the full conversation. The Queen and Duke of Edinburgh were both in good health on Wednesday. Mind you, that's nothing to say, is it? You know, how many times have you been in good health? And so you might be sitting there, you know, I don't know, watching a telly or perhaps at work. Usually gets me at work suddenly. You're sitting, you're doing something and you're pe you've noticed something, haven't you? You're looking at me and you can't quite put your finger on it. It's coming up in a minute. Don't worry. Don't rush me. It's all, it can't all come out at the same time. How many times have you been doing something? And, oh, oh, I, I don't feel very well. And then suddenly you're on death's door in the space of 10 seconds. So, I mean, you know, uh, the Duke and Ed were both in good health on Wednesday, the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh. That says nothing, does it? She might have had a sudden illness like I did. Last year, do you remember that? The flu. There I was, hosting karaoke at the Golden Lion in Camden, where I am no longer resident DJ there. And 
suddenly my legs ache. Oh, well, what's wrong with my legs? And then I got really cold. And in the space of 10 minutes, I became perfectly all right to really ill. So it can happen suddenly, but we're not saying that's happening here. The Queen met with Prime Minister Theresa May, Mother Theresa. Wasn't she wonderful yesterday? Those, those naughty Europeans are doing something. They're trying to sabotage our election. We can't have any of that, dear. What's happening? Is Mrs. Merkel coming over here in, in various different disguises, posting? Is she going to come over in various different disguises and post votes in various different voting boxes all over the country to try and change our election? Is that what's happening? Is that what has happened? And the bloke from France. Oh, he's gone soon, isn't he? Did you see them last night on the telly? Shouting and screaming at each other, honestly. I mean, I was it the French electoral debate? Or was it a new episode of Jeremy Kyle? I got, they can't behave themselves over there, can they? I think you should vote for the good-looking one, the bloke. He's quite nice, isn't he? He's a toy boy, isn't he? His missus is about 200 years old. I want to be a toy boy. Maybe I don't want to be a toy. No, I want a toy boy. Someone about 35. Thank you very much. Send them over now. You know the sort, scaffolders with tattoos. Anyway, back to the story. This is much more important than me looking for toy boys. Uh, the Queen met with Prime Minister Theresa May at Buckingham Palace while the Duke made a jovial appearance at the London Cricket Club. Oh, a jovial appearance. I wonder what wonderfully racist jokes he told this time. <laughs> He does like to put his foot in it, but we love him. We love him. Staff are due to meet at 10 o'clock to find the news first. Well, it's only an hour away, isn't it? 9.05 now. This is the earliest show ever I've done, isn't it? Everyone is on tender hooks, one source told the Daily Mail last night. Although meetings involving the entire royal household are occasionally called, uh, the way this has been done at the 11th hour is highly unusual and suggests that there is something major to be disseminated. No, disseminated? <laughs> Disseminated. What does that mean, disseminated? That sounds a bit sexual. We don't do sexual things on this program. But at that moment, uh, at the moment, only those closest to her genuinely know what this is all about. So there we are. That's happening this morning. It's happening. It's happening. Any idea what it is? That's my question to you this morning. What could be happening at the palace this morning? Now, we don't want... We don't want dead answers to that question. Can you think of anything funny and humorous that the Queen might be up to this morning that is top secret, but we will find out about at 10 o'clock? Maybe she's having new curtains. I don't know. That is my question to you. What do you think, in a funny way, is happening at the castle, to, at the palace today? Phone lines are now open, boys and girls. You can call in if you want to. If you don't want to, if you just want to sit there and listen to me rabbit it on for about half an hour or so, then that's OK as well. But if you want to call in with your suggestions on what's happening at Buckingham Palace this morning, lines are open. I have a local London number. It's 020 8144 3477, OK? 020 is my local London number. Or... You can Skype in. If you've got Skype, it's United Kingdom Talk. My Skype name is, all one word, United Kingdom Talk. So phone line open if you want to call in, 0208144377, or you can Skype in on, all one word, United Kingdom Talk. OK, let's do this morning's messages. And I might be sneezing, uh, I might be sneezing and sniffing a little bit more often than I usually, even than even I usually do this morning. I woke up uh, around about five o'clock this morning and this nostril was streaming. I mean, it wasn't mess on the pillow or anything like that. Don't worry about that. But this nostril was definitely streaming. and I kept blowing a blooming thing. Oh, it's so annoying. Good morning to Craig Hards. Good morning, Craig, who says you're doing an early one today. Yes, early up and about. Up and about. Thank you, Craig. Yes. Uh, good morning to Ray Reynolds, who says, Heidi, hi, Heidi, ho, Heidi, hi, Heidi, ho. Heidi's with us. He says, is that supposed to be funny? Heidi, the whole world is funny. Just look around you, darling. Look around at the very strange people running this world now. <laughs> oh, dear. Good morning to Danny Davis. 
My sister Sharon Butler, who says, by the time you start, I'll be leaving. Have you arranged that purposely, sis? It's my sister there. She's gone. You'd think you would wait for your brother's broadcast, wouldn't you? Good morning to Tony Power. Ah, here's one for the Queen. Hi, Chris. Apparently the Queen has an important announcement to make at 10 o'clock. Well, she can't be dead then, can she? She can't be dead if it's her going to make the announcement. Unless, of course, she's recorded it before. You know, I'm thinking of actually recording a show to be played when I die. What do you think of that? Is that a good idea? You see, I could record it now... And I might die in 10 minutes or I might die in 500 years time, in which case I wouldn't actually look like I really look at that time, would I? I'm not sure what to do. Should I do a show just in case I go? Huh? What do you reckon? Tony says, apparently the Queen has an important announcement to make at 10 o'clock. She has summoned everyone to the palace, probably to say it, that she has a gay corgi. Do you think so? <laughs> I like Gorgies. My favourite dogs are the Lassie type dogs. What are they? Collies. Collies? I like Collies. Aren't they lovely? I love the long noses. And you can kiss them. All up and down their noses. Actually, you can do that to me. Look. Have you seen my nose? I have a, what is known as a Barry nose. A Barry Manilow nose. Isn't it lovely? Beautiful. Uh, good morning to Diane. Jeb, good morning, Diane. Looking glamorous today in your little Facebook Live picture there. Danny says, I think she's selling one of the households as she's skin and they have reduced her state pension. They haven't reduced the Queen's state pension. She deserves £155.85 a week or whatever it is. She does. Huh? I only found out that I, 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 I remember the other day. As well as the private pension I've got coming next year, um, I've got a BT pension. Yes. So I rung them yesterday at four to send the things in. Apparently, and it's it's a BT. If you're if you're old or getting old like me, then you'll know this. It's a it's a BT final salary pension. Now I was with British Telecom for eleven years. They were a wonderful company to work for. They really looked after their staff. I have to say, can't fault them at all. And the pension I was in was a final salary. Pension that even I didn't even contribute to it at that time. Uh, the firm done the pension for you, and you didn't have to put in. Isn't that good? So I rang them yesterday, and they're going to send me a forecast. Now, apparently, the correct time for taking this particular type of pension is 60. However, you can take it at 50 or above with a reduced um, amount. So I've, I've sent off for two different forecasts one for when I'm 55 and one for when I'm 60. So I'll, I'll have a look at the differences between the two and make a decision on that. Isn't that exciting? You see, you've got to save up. <clears throat> if there's any young people watching this program, like Danny Davis, who's with us today, you need to be putting into a pension. Don't think, oh, but I'm only 20. I don't know how old you are, Danny. I'm only 20, 26, whatever you are, 26. What's the point? Well, I started at 27 putting into my pension. And let me tell you, those years have gone like that. Like that. And now it's about to pay out. See, you've got to get your finances in order, Danny. It's no use waiting till the last minute, dear. Um, back to here. One moment, please. There we are. Good morning. Alan says, are you in a different room? No. This is the mirror, the official Mirable Studio, Alan. Incorrect. Uh -uh. Danny says... Um, oh, no, hang on a minute. Heidi says, uh, that's serious then, Chris, if the Lord Chamberlain is involved. I should know my mum knows all about royal protocol. Oh, stop worrying. They're OK. They're OK. We'll see what happens at 10 o'clock. Oh, I don't know if we'll still be here at 10 o'clock because my friend's coming around later. We're going swimming later, me and Ron. We went out the other day. I'll tell you about that in a minute. And no one's noticed anything different in here. I'm really surprised no one's noticed anything different. Anyway, uh, Tony says it might be that the UK are going to get a point at this year's Eurovision Song Contest. Tony, why don't we have the Queen singing our song? How fabulous would that? She would get those votes. Even Mr Junker wouldn't complain at that, surely. Or the other one who's in the European Union. What's his name? Math Almighty. What's his name? Can't remember now. Mr Junker. Mr Junker. With those... Those NHS specs that he's got on. 
dear me. All that money, you'd think you'd have a decent pair of glasses, wouldn't you? God, dear. Um... Adam the Plumber's with us this morning. Good morning, Adam the Plumber. And Elaine's there. Oh, my God, the Queen will be opening for Barry Manilow next year. Yes, because you know Barry Manilow's coming next year, don't you? Yes, September 2018. Start saving now. You don't want one of those £15 tickets sitting up there. Come on, save up for your Barry Manilow tickets. Incidentally, there has been Barry Manilow news. One moment while I refer to my notes. Thank you. Oh, yes. Uh, Barry Manilow fans have been asked to check how their club membership is, whether it's current or not. Very important. Because without that club membership, you won't get those... You won't get the special tickets. Don't tell everyone. Make sure your Barry Manilow club membership is in order. Or you'll have to get the tickets that the normal people, the plebeians get, dear. The normal people, ghastly people, dear. Ghastly. You don't want to sit next to those people, dear, at the Barry Manilow concerts. You want to sit next to Fanilows. Great people like Elaine, like Eloise, like Angela, like Wendy, like Angela. That's who you want to see. You don't want to sit next to blooming drunkards, dear. Or people... Oh, oh, we haven't seen Barry before. Wait, wait, what, what's happening here? No! Save up for your tickets now. Check your Barry Manilow memberships. Very, very important. I could see the Queen warming up for Barry Manilow, though. I wonder what she would sing. What would the Queen sing at a Barry Man To warm up for Barry Manilow, I wonder. There's a good question. Elaine says, no offence intended. Uh, I love Her Majesty and wish her a long life. Yes, so do I, darling. So do I, Yorton. There is no offence given, Elaine. It's called humorous. People of our age can be humorous and not offend anyone. I don't care who I offend anymore. Especially the snowflake generation. I'm really offended. All oh, that hurts. Oh, 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 I need to go to a safe room. Oh, everything's offended me. Oh, where's my safe room? My safe room. Pathetic. Get a backbone, people, for Christ's sake, woman. Not woman or man. Doesn't matter which. Gustav says, morning, lovey. I've seen your nose. Thankfully, it's not 3D Facebook Live. That's all I'm saying and no more. Do you like my nose? It's nice, isn't it? It's a Barry nose. Actually, my nose is probably bigger than Barry's even. Um, Tony says, I was able to retire at 60. Are you over 60, Tony? Gosh. Aren't you lucky to have that young, supple face of yours, dear? My God, you must have spent a fortune on oil of you lay over the years. Is that true? That's made from cow's stomachs. <laughs> oh, dear. I always thought there was a bit of a funny smell around you, Tony. Walking around with the contents of a cow's stomach on your face. How strange and mis how strange and mysterious. <laughs> Tony says, uh, I was able to retire at 60 because I had a good company pension. I agree strongly with your statement about what about people saving up for pensions. Yes, you must. Please, young people who might be just tuning in for a moment or two to this programme before they've lost interest. Because young people only have the interest of approximately 25 seconds before they move on to something else. That is that is so true. Do you know, I can be DJing, not much DJing. Oh, by the way, Tony, I'm leaving the two brewers in June. Yes, they're going to be open until three o'clock on Thursdays. Oh, no, dear. Too late for me. Um, I think they want someone younger in there as well. Uh, Jimmy wants someone younger in there as well at, uh, on a Thursday, so that's good. They said, well, we're going to be three o'clock. No, thank you, dear. Tired, tired. But I don't want a leaving party. I just want to, you know, walk out the door like it's a normal night. I can't please. No surprise parties. I hate surprise parties. I will I just walk out the back door if they do that. I will. Isn't it funny? And yet I've done those sort of things all my life, surprise party. So I'll be leaving the two brewers very soon, Tony. Keep an eye on that, darling, all right? Uh, yes, young people, please, please start saving for your pensions. Otherwise, especially with uh, how things are going, there's going to be so many older people than younger people. And when you are, not my age, a little bit older than me, when you, when you get to 60, 65, 70 years old, the money that's... Uh, Therefore, the pensioners now, which isn't me, I haven't actually got to that age. Uh, 
Um, but the money that's the pensioners now isn't going to be there. It's not going to be there. You've got to sort yourselves out now, my darlings. Please listen to Uncle Chris's advice. Start saving for your pensions or, or do something. Don't spend it all. Try and buy a house or, or, or you know, a second house. You could do it like that. There are other things other than pensions. I remember telling my nephew, Jimmy Butler, when he was nine, nine years old, uh, when I used to go up there at Christmas, well, I still go up there at Christmas time. And we'd be uh, we'd be out in the middle of the night because I used to go for a nighttime walk at that time. And the reason is I used to work all the time until two or three in the morning at that point, uh, about run about 10 years ago now. And of course, my sister and that, go, they go to bed at like 10 o'clock. I couldn't sleep. So I used to go out for a nighttime walk. And my nephew, who's 20 now, he was about eight or nine at the time, thought it was fantastic to come out walking with Uncle Chris at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night. I used to go out for a walk and he'd be sometimes on his bike or it might be walking with me and I'd like, you know, I'd say, have you seen the stars? And he'd be looking up the stars and I'd try and explain to him some of the constellations, you know, the great plough, uh, Orion and all that. And I'd show him the stars. And we'd just have little conversations. And at nine years old, I was telling him to start saving for a house. <laughs> he didn't, unfortunately. I bet he wishes he did now because he's 20 now. He'd have a house now. If he just started saying anything at nine years old, and it's only a few quid here, a few quid there, it soon adds up, dear. So please, young people, start doing something for your retirement, my darling, all right? Uh, good morning to Barbara Leeds. Morning, Barbie. Morning, Barbie. Um, let's have a look. Glamo's with us this morning. Good morning, Glamo. Uh, Heidi says, how much coffee have you had this morning, Chris? I don't drink coffee, Heidi. Incorrect. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. No coffee. I've had simply one cup of tea. It is. Oh, we've got a phone call. How exciting. Uh, let's go to line one this morning. Good morning, Tony. Hello. Can't hear you. Now, what up? Just a moment. Had the button pushed. Good morning, Tony. Hello. How are you, sir? I'm all right. I just, I just uh, rang basically to make a declaration. Oh, here's the declaration coming from Tony Power, Eurovision writer extraordinaire. I haven't had plastic surgery. I never said you had plastic surgery. <laughs> I'm joking. I never said... Your name's not Jimmy Smith, lovey. <laughs> I never said... You know all these holidays he goes on? Oh, I know, yeah. Well, he yeah, doesn't. He, he's, in, he's having some more surgery on his eyes or something like that, lovey. <laughs> Stop, he might be listening in, you know. <laughs> he's not a regular viewer to this show, unfortunately. Are you sure? Love. No, he's busy in an office somewhere counting money. You know We'll never be allowed inside the doors again if he, if he hears that, I tell you. <laughs> he's been, I've been with him for um, 27 years. He's uh, been very I fair know, to me over the years. Yeah. I've yeah. no complaints. He's a lovely man, really. I've no complaints. You know, of course, in that time, everyone has rows. You know, we've we've had rows left right. We're a terrible rows sometimes. Still there. Oh, but, I know. Um, I was down there the other day. There was, there was, uh, you know, he was, you know, he wasn't very happy that there was a big queue outside, and he couldn't fit them all in. <laughs> well, he, I'm surprised. I'm surprised he didn't go down and sell cut price tickets. You could buy a ticket for half the price which may or may not get you in. But without the ticket, you've got no chance to get in. <laughs> <laughs> He's all right, he is. Yeah, I'm, I'll be leaving there um, sometime in June, probably. Really? Yes, they want to go to your three o'clock in the morning, which is just far too late for me. Um, so he said, he said he'll let me know four weeks before it's due to happen. So yeah, but that, but that won't last very long, will it? I mean, I mean, who wants to stay up till three o'clock in the morning anyway? So it'll probably uh, go back to the... Yes, Back Tony, to old time again. you don't, and I don't, but young people do. Do they really, though? I because, think so, I mean, yeah. they came out with this thing uh, some years back about, about, uh, uh, about pubs opening, opening all night or you're, into half, you're, you're sort of half of the night or whatever. And, uh, and now people don't want to go to the pubs at all that late. You know, they'd rather just you know, sort of go back to the old time and uh, you're at say, 11 or 12 o'clock and go home. I think, you know, so... Yeah, well, I mean, I don't. I mean, it's a bit too much for me, to be honest. Three o'clock in the morning, so so that's me. But uh, I've already picked up, funnily enough, a, a new Sunday night 
which Have is you? um yes uh, which i'll be starting in a couple of weeks oh, i've got an itch now uh, which i'll be starting in a couple of weeks that's in camden town it's another karaoke night oh, uh we oh, did really? that? yes we did one last sunday um as a tryout and it works very well it's at the camden sorry the camden eye which is actually a uh, uh, almost just across oh, the road. Uh, on, on the corner of Kentish Road. Correct. And, uh, it's only where the Black Cap used to be, isn't it? Very, very close to it. Like 20 seconds, 30 seconds walk from the Black Cap. Isn't oh, that that's, funny? It's a big pub as well, isn't it? No. No, it isn't looks it? big. Is that that um, great big pub on, on, the, on, on the junction there? You know, the... Correct. Yes, it's right on the junction. That's right. And we did oh. one Sunday and it worked really well. And we'd be starting there. Two week break now because I'm already committed this Sunday somewhere. And the week okay. after I'm on holiday. So it would be starting in like two, two and a half weeks time on the May the 21st. Yeah. Okay. You all set for Eurovision, by the way. Oh, Eurovision. I, I mean, I mean, I, I, I've listened to the CD a couple of times. I'm ready. I, I'm, do you know what? I'm, all, I'm already ready to delete it from my iPhone. It's, <laughs> I'm not surprised. It's so there are dreary. Some songs in it this year, I have to say. <clears throat> do you think we've got a chance? Do you like our no, song or not? Uh, we've got not a cat in the hell's chance. No. I, I just don't think that the BBC take it serious enough, you know, to, to <clears throat> you, you know, they know exactly what they're putting into song for your final, so they'll select sort of you know, six or eight songs and put them in there and, yes. and uh, uh, without a cat in the house chance of winning. You know, it's uh, just um, awful. Even, you know, even the one that's chosen by the public won't win, you know. Mm. So they, they know exactly what they're doing and uh, I just don't think they've got any intention of, of putting a winning uh, no. song you know, in, you know, into the equation, really. No, you know? I don't so, either. No, I just don't think they take it seriously. Enough, I think. And I think Ireland are quite similar. Like, you know, the, you know, the certain countries I've, around Europe, I think, that just cannot afford to you know, be staging the contest anymore. I've heard the and Irish. Uh, I've heard the Irish one as well. Dreadful, dreadful. Yeah, so I, I, I think that's what's going on. But I think really the the odds are the Italians will probably win it this year. But uh, they seem to have the have the better, well, the most likely song to win it. But I think most of them, as you say, are, are a bit. Were they it's out scary. of it for a while, the Italians? They actually came out of it for a while, didn't they? Yeah, they there was a bit some dispute some years back or something like that. I can't remember what it was all about now, <clears> but <throat> yeah, there was there was a there was some issue there or something like that. I I, I think you know there was some moaning that they weren't getting enough points or, right. or some stupid thing like that. But uh, and they just pulled out. Didn't feel that they were getting enough notoriety in the yeah. in the, uh, in the events. I like so. I like the song this year. Keep the faith. That's quite yeah, haunting, I think I, that one. Was that, um, oh gosh, what country was that now? Georgia. Yeah, oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that one. Was that part uh, of Russia, Georgia? It was, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, I think I know the one you mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's also one there, you know, from Malta called Breathlessly. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> Breathlessly. <laughs> uh, good God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... I and you know, I, I hear I'm... it, I just laugh my head off. You yeah. Know, it's, 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 where did she get it? It's out of... A title called Breathlessly. Breathlessly. Well, perhaps she's going to die. That's why. <laughs> Some people say, what did they die of? Breathlessness. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I, I'm, I'm actually not going to be watching it at all. I'm actually going to Grand Canaria. Oh, are you? Oh, OK. They'll all have it on over there, Tony. Oh, I'm sure they That'll will. Be That'll be on worry. in every bar over there. You know that. Probably, uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, but uh, I'm just going over there with a fr with a friend this year for the first time. It's my first trip abroad on a plane for uh, since 1970. Um, I think it's 76. Oh, is it really? Why is that, Tony? Like that. Why is that? I think it's because when I went over there your, your first time, uh, I had such a bad experience. Uh, what, the the... Um, uh, the plane trip over there was 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 so unpleasant. You know the. I mean, it was walking all over the place. I ended up getting food poisoning for nearly two weeks. Oh, my I, I, I got so burnt in the sun that um, I, I couldn't hardly walk for, you know, for a week after. Ah, uh, well, that, that is your fault, isn't it, though? The burning and, uh, in the sun. Well, it was just, uh, and then uh, uh, we all got chased down the road by um, a group of, um, of, um, of Spanish uh, people with knives in their hands. Oh, my basically. God. Uh, uh, because one of the, one of, the, of our group actually eyed up one of the uh, 
um, of the Spanish girls that were there. Oh, at the time. right, okay. So I think they took offence to it and chased us down the road. <laughs> so all in all, the whole thing was just a, a, quite an experience. A shambles, dear, is the word. A I like that shambles, word. Shambles. And uh, I ended up getting, oh, it's just, uh, it took me two <laughs> weeks, to, you know, two weeks to recover. And as for, I would never again go abroad on a... Well, you're um, going, you're going. But, I'm going this year, and in fact, yeah. I'm going to uh, to, um, uh, to Grand Canary uh, next next week, and okay. then later on in the year, I'm going to San Francisco. Is the Eurovision next week? It is. Oh, it's the next week. Sorry, I mean the the thirteenth. Yeah, it's the thirteenth. Is the Eurovision? Oh, hang on it? a minute. Hang on. So, oh That's, God, uh, I'll be I'll be on holiday. Saturday, isn't it? It's not this Saturday, but uh, Saturday after. I'll be on holiday. I'm going to have to watch it while I'm on holiday. Oh, you're on holiday as well, are you? Yeah, I'm away. Well, I don't, I don't go um, on planes anymore. I'm fed up with it. I'm not scared or uncomfortable. Well, I am uncomfortable on truck planes, and that's one of the reasons why. I'm fed up with the whole queuing up at airports and mucking around at pension uh, passport control and, oh, I can't stand it. Sitting down for two hours waiting for something to happen. Oh, I can't bear it. I've, I've given up. Oh, I know. I gave up. <clears throat> and I go on uh, caravan holidays now. Oh well, why not? Yeah, it's probably just as good. I mean, I um, um, over the last thirty or you know thirty odd years or whatever, I've just been going to places like Brighton or going yeah. to you know local places like yeah. that, and and it's just as enjoyable over the place. Well, it is. You know, you just got just go and do you, what you want to do. And, you get in the car, you drive two, three, four hours wherever <laughs> you're going, uh, and then you get at the other end, and you're there. You don't need any tickets or bits of paper or ex- money yeah. exchange. Or, you know, what if you've forgotten something? I mean, if it's that desperate and you've forgotten something, you can simply get back in your car and go home and collect it. You know, it's yeah. as easy as... Or get someone to send it to you. You know, it's Absolutely, so much yeah. easier. And, oh, by the way, before we go, I, um, I would I would strongly recommend that people did save for the future, by the way. Ah, yes. Um, so t- tell us about your pension. You don't have to say... So you well, get, well, I can tell you quite... I'm quite happy to tell you, you know... Um, um, I, I've been working for the council for for some thirty years, and you know, in, you know, in fact, um, and and I, I had been paying into a company pension. It's 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 uh, I forget what they call it now. The or the so the local authority pension. Is it a fi- was it I've a final salary that, one? It's a superannuation kind of thing, and uh, I, I I've been paying into that since I started uh, in in in, uh, in the job basically, and I had. Uh, also paid additional voluntary contributions on top of my pension. Right. And and uh, so that enabled me to be able, able to retire early, you know. And uh, I mean, I am I retired last not just just not last year, just yeah, you know, the year before last I retired, and I'm still, but uh, I'm I'm actually going back there again doing some part time work for the company I work for. But but uh, but yeah, uh, but now I need not work at all. Uh, I don't actually have to work. You know, um, um, I can live on the company pension and I'm not even getting a state pension yet. Excellent. So so um, it, it is so important to try to find some money to put aside. Yeah, uh, it really it, is. It, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, sort of think about these holidays. Do you really need to go on these holidays abroad? You know, do you need to go on these, uh, uh, you know, all these expensive uh, your nights out or whatever? Uh, if you think how much you can save and just put a little bit aside, something uh, save yeah, something. It, it isn't really it? is worth it in the end because I am. It's the best thing I've ever done. Now, I mean, I'm just slightly over sixty now, but I can enjoy myself, uh, and I still got state pension to come in seven years' time. Excellent. So, um, so, uh, and I'm doing the things that I used to do ten, yeah. fifteen years ago. So I had my um, my thing from the pension. You know, you, you've. You, you ask the government to send you a statement through. And as long as I contribute for another six years, I'll be on the maximum. So that takes me to six years, will take me to 60, actually. Although well, yeah. it doesn't pay out, I don't think, until 68, the state one now, does it? That, that's true, yeah. But, yeah. but then again, a lot of people will argue, you know, to be fair, you know, it, it's, not as, it's not as easy saving these days, you know, because, uh, you know, people are not earning as much and, 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 uh, and wages are not <coughs> keeping up with, mm. with, with, with the... Uh, uh, with the Jones, yes, say, you know? I think so, I think these I think these zero hour contracts are very unfair. I really do. Oh you know, yeah, yeah. You know that's and, that's uh, where you get employed by someone, but you never know how many hours you're going to get. I mean, how can you arrange your life around that? I think that's terrible. That is, I really do. Well, it's difficult, isn't it? 
Uh, I mean, you could ask ask some of your listeners and see what they think of it. But I mean, um, it, it's it's not easy saving anyway these days. That's no, for sure. No, it, it, it's not as easy as it used to be back in the, back in the day. You know when yeah, when yeah. when you sort of uh, you paid into a pension and that was it. You know, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, and you paid so much and so much was taken. You didn't get any choice or. Anything okay. Else, yeah, you know? I've got a message here. Adam says we want Miss Jason to hold on to your dream in the Eurovision. Is that a possibility? Uh, I think, <laughs> no, it's not possible to do that. No, because it's it's, it's a song that was uh, that was that was written for that particular uh, event, which is for and and also it has been publicised as well. It's been yes. it's been on YouTube and it's been on. Uh, so you can't too late have a song now, yeah. in there yeah, that has yeah, already yeah. been b- Darren, been released. Darren Believe Darren says, you know Darren Evans? He says, yeah. it will work till three o'clock. Tony, stop being so miserable. That's Darren. Well, of course, he's he's still a young lad still, Darren, isn't he? He's oh, be- well, What's he, that's below okay. 40? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> below oh, 40? <laughs> what can you say? <laughs> Thanks for calling in, Tony. Always a pleasure, sir. OK, I'll let you get on with it. And let's see what the Queen has got to say. We're, we? we're still waiting, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> Cheerio, Tony. Thanks for calling. OK, speak later. Bye-bye now. There we are. Tony calling in from um, uh, London. And as I say, he works, w- writes songs for the Eurovision Song Contest. That's what he does. Kevin wants to know, what time did you come on this morning? At nine o'clock this morning, Kevin. Nine o'clock. We're all early birds this morning, dear. All right. Now, uh, so Tuesday this week. Where was I? Tuesday. Um, I went shopping. Uh, it was my mate's birthday, actually. It was my mate's birthday day. Each year, we have a couple of days. Uh, my birthday is... So we have a Chris's day, which isn't necessarily on, on your birthday. But I go out and I get money spent on me. Well, it was his birthday uh, just at the weekend. Ronnie is now 44 years old. So for his birthday, we went to Bister... Uh, Bister Premium Outlets Shopping Village, which is quite nice. And you've got all the designer labels there, uh, the Ralph Lauren, the Ted Baker and all that. And we went shopping there and um, uh, we we had quite a nice day there, I must say. I got very, very tired at the end, as I usually do about four o'clock, because I should be in bed sort of sometime between four and five for a couple of hours. But it was a lovely, lovely day. Uh, we had lunch at a little little restaurant you know, and they have a fantastic position where that restaurant is, because as you go in, it's there. So a little drive down there. And uh, you know how fast I drive on a motorway. I'm, I'm like I'm quite happy at 55 mile an hour sitting on that inside lane. That's that's my normal speed on the motorway. And the day before, my mate was begging me to go at the speed limit. He'd, Please, can you go a bit faster than you usually do? Well, and I'm like, well, well, it's, it's just not necessary to go that far. Oh, please, please go at the speed limit. So I did put my foot down to a very, very rapid... Rapid 70 miles an hour, or in my particular spacecraft that is known as Warp 7. I don't actually have a car. I have a spaceship, boys and girls, a spaceship, and it go, uh, which was recently repaired by my nephew, Jimmy Butler, international, 20 years old, with his own unit repairing cars and now spaceships as well. So he repaired my spaceship and... Um, so we took the drive down there, got there, uh, we went and had a cup of tea and then we started looking around. And uh, I purchased a couple of items myself. First of all, and not a, I'm so surprised not a single person has asked me, has noticed this jacket. I'm really, really disappointed. No one has said, I like your new jacket. I can't believe it. Would you like to see the lining? One moment, please. Look, there's a lining. It's, it's, it's quite plain lining. But this is from Barber. B-A-R-B-O-U-R. Barber. Look at this. Uh, wait for the price. Wait till you... I, I bought myself two things while I was... I had no intention of buying anything, actually. Now, the way I go shopping, I don't necessarily go out looking for something. I'll go to... Ah, oh, that over there. It, it jumps out at me. And this jumped out at me on the special offer rail. Oh, yes, the special offer rail. So when you go to these premium outlet shops, uh, number one, the stuff is always going to be cheaper than it is in their main shops, for example, in London, Manchester, Birmingham or something like that, where you might see a, a Ted Baker there. Very expensive. You go there, it's much, much cheaper. 
So we're in this bar barber shop. He's looking around for stuff. And his boyfriend came as well. Um, Andy, who's just ordered his new car. Oh, yes. Ron's boyfriend, Andy, has just ordered a new car. <gasps> a BMW Series 4. Oh, yes. That's going to be his new spaceship. And don't come till September. All that weight. All that weight. So I've said as a celebration for the new car, I hope I'm invited to go down and pick it up with him. You know, you want someone a little bit older looking after you, making sure you're not going too fast, lovey. I hope I'll be invited. I said as a celebration of your purchase of the new car, I shall offer to take them to Coworth Park for a little afternoon tea. Thank you very much. One moment, please. <laughs> afternoon tea at Coworth Park. Yes. So that's that. Um, so we're going around in there, and then this jumped out at me. Look at it, and I thought, oh, that's nice. And I said, Ron, what do you think of this? He said, well, it's not you, not me, but it's you. Look at this, lovely. Can you see the colour? Lovely sky blue. I'm almost the same colour as my background. Can you see me? Hello, hello. Oh, jazz waves. Jazz waves for those boring people at universities. Jazz waves. <laughs> Idiots. Um, and I picked it up and I tried it on. I thought, that's nice. Then I looked at the price. Then I looked at the price, right? Recommended. Oh, I've got the label still here. One moment, please. Oh, where's that? Here it is. Here it is. Barber. Barber. Recommended retail price. £279. Outlet price, £186. Actual price on the reduced two rail. Go and have a guess. Wild stab in the dark. £75. Thank you very much. £75 for this. Check this out. £75 reduced from £279. So I'm very, very pleased about that. That is a bargain, a bargain. Excellent. That's a price that you want to pay in it. So I'm well pleased with that. 79 quid. And I, I would have bought this at the normal price if I was out in London, I'll admit to you. I haven't bought this because it was cheap. I bought it because I liked it. Don't just go in shops. Oh, that's a special offer. Let's buy that. Oh, that's a special offer. Let's buy that. I love it. I love it. Not only that, here comes another special offer. So we continued walking around, looking in various shops. We do like doing that. And then we went into my mate's favourite shop, Ralph Lauren. That's his favourite little shopping experience, Ralph Lauren. And he's downstairs looking at shirts and things like that. And um, uh, I don't I don't need any shirts. Well, I do need shirts because I've got a massive pile of ironing waiting downstairs. The lady who does my ironing is on holiday. She's on holiday. Mrs. Patel at the dry cleaners. She charges a little bit too much to do shirts, lovey. Something like £2.50 per shirt. I know I should get the iron out. It's, oh, it's so boring. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, so I'm waiting for it. I'm seriously running out of shirts in, in the cupboard. There's hardly anything left now. I need any shirts. So I'm wandering around looking. He's trying on jumpers and everything because for his birthday, you see, I've given him a price to spend. I've given him an amount to spend. And in being what he is, he has to spend every penny of that on the day. Is a bit like those people that come back from holiday in the economy area of an aeroplane. You know, oh, 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 got £100 left. Oh, what can I buy for £100? What can, and they, they've got to spend the money. It wouldn't occur to them to go home perhaps and spend it another day or not spend it at all. They've got to spend that money. It's like burning a hole in their pocket. Have you seen them on the plane? Oh, oh, got hundred pounds. Oh, what kind of? Oh, 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 that's a nice watch. Oh, I need a watch, and they got ten watches on their arms, and they have to buy another watch because they have to spend that money. He's the same. He has to spend the money that's available to him. <laughs> so he's trying on various different. I couldn't see anything downstairs, so I went upstairs, and there were very, very delicious two men up there serving, around about thirty years old. <clears throat> One with a beard, 
and one of the dark skin. Very, very tasty indeed. So I'm chatting away to them. And then I saw, I saw trainers. And I thought, well, let's have a look at the trainers. Oh my God. Are you ready for this? Here are my brand new ruby red trainers. Da, 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 da. Ralph Lauren trainers. Thank you. Not cheap copies like what's on eBay that you probably wear. Ruby red trainers. Ralph Lauren. Go on. How much? How much? You are not going to be able to guess the price of these trainers. Thank you, those of you that are sharing. Oh, just a moment. I, I, I can see your messages there. I'll come back to that in a moment. I can... Um, uh, what was the sign? Oh, I shouldn't have looked at those messages. It's thrown me. Mustn't look at the messages till I've finished the conversation. <sighs> Go on, have a guess. How much were these trainers? Right? Usual price, about £100. I would not pay £100 for a pair of trainers. I might do for a pair of shoes. Absolutely not trainers. Go on, have a guess. I would pay up to £50 for a pair of trainers. So that gives you a clue now. There's a clue. I would pay a maximum, a total maximum of £50 for a pair of trainers. Right? How much? Not like my nephew, Jimmy, 20. Ah! Oh! 150 quid on a pair of Adidas or Nike trainers. Do me a favour. Are you off your head? They only last about six months and you have to chuck them away. When's the last time you chucked a pair of shoes away? Hmm? 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 They last for ages, don't they? Ages. Right, so look at these. No. Not 50 pounds. Not 40. Not even 30 pounds. No. Jackie can. Good morning, Jackie. Not 49.99. Nope. Adam Tubero says £45. Not £45, Adam. Nope. Incorrect. Not 40 Not 35 Not even. £30. Yes. Any advances on £30? We're still going down. Not £25. 24 23 No, Adam. Not 25 22 21 not even £20. With the 20% off voucher that I also had, that everyone had in the shop, I paid for these £19. They, let me tell you, there was these ones, there was three different colours. There was these ones, I think there were some black ones, which were almost completely out of stock, and I think blue ones. There were blue ones as well. I got these for £19. And while I'm in there, these were literally flying off the shelves. While he was going to get my box with my pair of these, there were people coming up the stairs and looking, oh, I'll have a pair of these. They were flying. There won't be any left now. They were flying off that shelf. So there you go. You know, £75 for that. And £19 for a pair of trainers, designer trainers. That's not bad, is it? Not bad going. What a wonderful time. And that, that's my petrol paid for. That is easily. Four times over. Not what well, actually not petrol. My my spaceship runs on dilithium crystal. Dilithium crystal, like in Star Trek. Andy's car will be fitted with all the latest devices. That's Andy, Ronnie's boyfriend, his new BMW 4 Series arriving in September. Oh, yes, it's got everything on it. Warp drive, phasers, photon torpedoes, cloaking device. It's all that slipstream. It's got it all on there, dear. All on there. So there's my bargain. So he continued to go around doing his shopping and bits and pieces. And I had to dash to the toilet a couple of times due to my irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> and then, what? Well, I think that was it, really. Then I'd left the cat outside in the garden in the morning because it said it was going to be a nice day. And uh, while we were there, suddenly these dark clouds come up and all I could worry about was the cat um, and that she was going to be in the garden. It was going to pour down with rain. So uh, uh, we left at about four o'clock. I think we got back here. Run about 5.15, something like that. So an, so an excellent day. And he bought everything he wanted to, jumpers and I think a wallet and things like that. He bought loads of stuff. And um, and, and that's it. But yeah, and, and did he buy trainers? I think he did buy a pair of those red trainers, actually. My mate, he's got hundreds of pairs of trainers. I mean hundreds. He's got hundreds and hundreds of pairs of trainers. I don't know why you would want so many trainers. I've actually now got one, two, three. I've got about five pairs now, which is the most I've ever had. But they were all like special offer type things. 
You're like, oh, I'll have those. And I've got enough trainers now to last me for the next few years, to be honest. Don't need to buy any more. And I've got shoes as well, which I mainly wear shoes for work. The trainers are... And the funny thing is, I've got this old pair, really old, dilapidated pair of non-designer trainers that I wear when I walk up to the swimming pool and that. And the, the, the sole on the bottom, part of it's detached and it flaps. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't chuck them away. Not until they're completely broken, dear. We need to wear them as long as possible. We need to get our money's worth out of them. Absolutely. Thank you. Right, let's do some of your messages now. One moment, please. Let's just scroll back a touch here. Uh, again, did I did I say thank you for sharing the some some of you have been sharing uh, today's show on your wall? So thank you very much for that. Kevin likes the jacket. Thank you very much. Wendy likes the jacket. Thank you, Wendy. Um, Tony says, "Oh, that's the jacket I saw in Oxfam the other day." So someone has eventually bought it, Chris. I beg your pardon, dear. Not that there's anything wrong with helping people by buying Oxfam stuff, but it's not brand new. This was Barber. Thank you, Barber. Uh, Kevin likes the jacket as well. Um, boo -doo -doo -doo. John Aitken says you were robbed. I don't think so. What, £75 for this? I don't think so, dear. Do you have any nice clothes at all, John? At all, John? Do you have anything nice you can wear, lovey? Eh? 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 Uh, Craig says, uh, Craig's with us. Good morning, Craig. Uh, I've said good morning to you already, haven't I? How many mornings do you want, dear? Uh, <laughs> let's have a look. Just scrolling up there. Jackie says, I need my bright sunglasses to see them on you. A bit bright. All the, all the lads have got those bright red trainers. I did say, you see, that because the reason they've come down in price is because you may have noticed all the lads last year were wearing bright red trainers. Well, they've moved now. I think they've gone on to orange this year. Orange. So really, that's last year's fashion. And I did say to the bloke in there, I said, that's how the old boys save money like myself. I said, we wait until everything's gone out of fashion. And then we, we clear up, you know, for a, for, for a fraction of the prize that the young lads would have. Because the young lads would have spent £120 on those last year. Now they're 20 quid. <laughs> and that's why they can't save up for their pensions. Got to keep up with the fashion. Gustav says it's a lovely jacket, darling, and a bargain. Although they do find it hard to shift oversizes from previous seasons. Pardon? It's not that big, is it, dear? And yes, love the ruby slippers as well. I don't know if I'm going to be wearing the ruby slippers at work, to be honest. I'm more of a, I'm more shoes at work. I'm more shoes at work. I am shoes at work. Uh, Adam sends a little message in and says, please could you say hi to Jimmy Jukes and Mike, oh, is it Michelle or Michael? I think it's Michelle. Please could you say hello to Jimmy Jukes and Michelle Thorpe from UK Homes for Heroes, Pride and Passion. These two work so hard for the ex-service personnel on the streets of the UK. And this uh, UK ho homes, homes for Heroes is a charity which was founded in 2010 to help homeless ex-service personnel. Currently, it's estimated there are more than 4,500 ex-service members of the British Armed Forces, which are homeless throughout the UK, and we are expecting this number to rise in the near future. They, they uh, focus on helping ex-service personnel enjoy clean living environments, a place where they can feel at home. They also focus on helping them find a permanent home through social housing and assisting them with their application. Uh, you can you can donate to that if you want. The information is at the following web address if you want to look at the whole thing there, my darlings. OK, so it's a UKH4H and it's the number four. OK, so it's just letters and numbers. All right. UKH4H dot org dot uk ukh4h dot org dot uk i will um comment i'll put that there in the comments thing if anyone wants to have a little look at that all right ukh4h dot org dot uk excellent uh, organization and that's what those people do so thank you for sending that uh, message in uh, adam much appreciated good morning to mark who's with us this morning. Good morning, Mark. You're a bit late this morning, aren't you, dear? Do try and keep up with the rest of us, Mark. Thank you very much. So um, that was our shopping day out. Uh, for lunch, we went back to the restaurant that we'd had the cup and tea in, and I got a... Uh, Ronnie complained that his soup was cold. There was always something wrong, dear. 
always something wrong. He complained the soup was gone. I had ragu, vegan ragu, which was quite nice, and vegetable soup. So that was quite nice to eat. Um, and after that, uh, we went home. Uh, fortunately, it didn't start raining, so the cat didn't get wet, I'm pleased to say. Got home, went to bed, got up again, went round to his house, uh, and we were, we had fish and chips. We were supposed to be, we were going to go out for dinner. But where I live, around here, sort of the last table you can get is like about half past, half past eight, nine o'clock, which was, by the time we got in and had a sleep, it was too early. So I eventually went round to the fish and chips shop and we just went and got fish and chips, uh, which my mate, he'd ordered them. And I got there, I said, um, have you got the order for Chris, please? Oh, what was it again? Only we didn't write it down. Well, what was the point of making the phone call then? You know, can you write these things down? Nice chips, Churchill's. Although I think they'd been in the thing a bit long because some of them were a bit hard. Do you know what I mean? I think they'd been sitting there in that, in that, you know, when they fry the chips and they put them in that thing with a glass dome thing. They'd gone a bit hard, but they were quite nice. I had chips and baked beans. And then we watched, started watching this film called Jerusalem, which looked good. Jerusalem, that's with a Z. And it's about, um, oh, and, and uh, of course, you know, uh, uh, it, it's set in Jerusalem. And of course, I'm seeing all these things on the film that I've been to. Because I've been to Israel on holiday a couple of years ago. Fantastic place to go and visit. Lovely people. Tel Aviv is, wow, I mean, <laughs> Tel Aviv is fantastic. And I went to Jerusalem while I was there and I kept seeing all these places that I'd been to. But, and it was about zombies, zombies taking over or something like that. It was a horror film. Uh, but unfortunately, it was done in that way, like with a home video camera. You know what I mean? Now, there was another film done like that. Which I, I had to leave the cinema in the end. I hated it. Now, this that other thing was in New York. Now, what was it called? Uh, can't remember. Clove, Cloverfield? Cloverfield, that was it. Cloverfield. That was done in the same way. So someone's got a video camera. It's like done on a video camera. And it, it's just shaky and like that all the time. And eventually it just got on my nerves and I had to leave. I had to leave Ronnie's house because it just did my head in watching this. Really did. So um, I left there and uh, that was a nice day. So that was Tuesday. Uh, what's the time now? Oh, it's, it's, nearly, it's nearly 10 o'clock, isn't it? I'll have to go soon. Um, finally today, I'd like to tell you... Oh, hang on a minute. Mark says, great news, karaoke in Camden. Yes, indeed. Karaoke in Camden starts every Sunday, 8 till 11 from May the 21st. OK, can I just blow my nose again? I'm sorry. I, I woke up sneezing last night like anything. It was awful. Thank you. Yes, that starts May the 21st. So that'll be karaoke at the Camden Eye every Sunday, May the 21st, from May the 21st, 8 to 11 p.m. Okay. Uh, Kevin says, I thought Rob was getting Apple headphones. Rob who? Who's Rob? Oh, Ronnie. Yes, he was. He changed his mind. He changed his mind. He had the clothes instead. John says, I have many designer clothes, dear, but I still wear my old faithful jeans and plain T-shirts and typical check shirts. Oh, I wish I could wear my jeans, John. The same ones I used to wear to trade. They just about go over my arm now. I had the old tight 501s and no top on dancing for hours on end, John. I did. Thank <laughs> you, Timmy. Now, what was I saying? I forgot what I was saying now. Oh, yes, I wanted to tell you, finally, finally on the show today, uh, but just before we do the birthdays, I had a dream the other night. Uh, last, last, on, on the Tuesday, it was actually on the Tuesday afternoon when I was sleeping between shopping and going up to Ron's house. And the dream was, there I was, at some sort of party conference, which had finished, and Theresa May, she said to me, come on, Chris. I said, what? She said, come on, Chris. And Theresa May and I were friends in this dream. We'd been friends for a long time. So she's she's coming out. She's coming off the stage. Everyone's clapping, right? And she saw me. And she come on like that. Come on, come. I said, what, what? She said, come, come. So we went and we left. We left. This is the dream we have now. We left the conference hall, which was kind of in the middle of countryside and forest and all that. So we come out there and we're going through this little path 
to a little bungalow, which was hers. So she's opened the door and gone in, and there's like an island in the middle, you know, like a like a long island in the kitchen, in the kitchen. And she said, have a sit down. Go on, sit down, Chris. So I'm sat on a stool, and then she's gone over the other side of the island, and she's putting the kettle on. Do you want a cup of tea? Yeah, I've got a cup of tea. Right, so she's doing a cup of tea and all that, and she's put the tea down in front of me. And um, <laughs> it's a, it was surreal, this dream. It was so real. And uh, she sat down with her tea, and she leaned behind her, picked up a load of papers. She said, right, what's all this then? And she went like that in front of me, and I looked down, and it was the pension form that I'd filled out you remember that I, that I told you I went to a pension meeting a couple of weeks ago? It was the pension film I filled out. She said, what's this then? She said, I think we can tear that up, don't you? And it, 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 when I woke up, I realised that I'd been working for her. And she didn't want me to go. And she, said, what's, she went, what's all this then? I think we can tear this up, don't you? And then, and then I woke up. What a wonderful dream. Oh, at last. I may not meet the wonderful Theresa May in real life, but I now have done so in a dream, I'm very pleased to say. <laughs> John says, I know I was at trade at the same time. Oh, I know you were, John. Surprised I didn't meet you upstairs in that little room as well, have I? There was a few. <laughs> Kevin says, I like the iPhone camera door. Th oh, yes, that's quite funny, that is. Uh, if you have a look on my wall, if you're not on my Facebook... Um, my Facebook is Chris Reardon UK, right? Facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. And uh, you'll see a little video there of the of the ring camera uh, door bell that I've got. Because you can download the video. If anyone moves, anything moves outside of my front door, it all automatically starts recording now. It doesn't record on the unit. It sends it wirelessly to some server somewhere, probably in California or somewhere like that. And... Um, you can download the video and put it up online. And the weirdest thing is, so I put this this video up the other day. I was at work and the doorbell went ding dong. And the, the, the ring comes up on your mobile phone. And I looked at it while I was at work. It was only a Labour man, a, a Labour party man, knocking at my door, hoping, desperately looking for support here. Of course, I wasn't there, so I didn't answer. Uh, but I've got the video and it is on my Facebook wall. The funny thing is there's about 800 views on that now. I only ever get about 200 on my shows. So clearly the Labour man is more popular than these shows. Isn't that saying something? It really is. All right, let's do today's birthdays and then we'll uh, disappear. I've got a few bits and pieces to do this morning. Um, and uh, I I'll let you into a little secret as well just before I go. All right. Uh, happy birthday today to James Herr. Oh, yes. Music producer, James. I think you're mu it is you, isn't it? Just a moment. But yes. Music producer, James. So there he is. It is in his Facebook profile picture sitting in front of all computers. I don't know what they do, James. I never did remix him. I'm nearly out of the did you, did, I'm nearly completely out of the DJ now, James. Um, I've sort of done that now. You know, I'm just karaoke and quiz nights. I've now been offered a bingo night. I've now been offered a bingo night as well. So that's coming along. Uh, happy, so happy birthday, James. Happy birthday to the lovely Trindy. Happy birthday, Trindy. 57 today. You're only just ahead of me, aren't you, Trindy? I'm 54. So happy birthday today to Trindy. Very successful man. Uh, Georgina Britnell is 27 today. Happy birthday, Georgina. Dola Brown is 52 years old today. Happy birthday. And uh, Andy Jones, who owns a couple of bars in London, is today 51 years old. I'd also like to say happy birthday today to great niece Olivia, who was two years old yesterday. So happy birthday yesterday to great niece Olivia. Let's do the song. Oh, hang on. Oh, one moment. One moment. Uh, oh, hang on. I'll tell you what. Uh, no, no, we'll do that first. Oh, hang on. Oh, if I do that now. No, hang on a minute. Just a minute. I just want to check the BBC news site in case there's any Queen announcement. One moment, please. Let's see if we've got anything up there. No, there's nothing, is there? Still nothing on the BBC website. Is there a Buckingham Palace news thing? Buckingham Palace official news. Let's see if we've got any news there. 
no, it doesn't say. Doesn't say. No, I still haven't got any news about uh, Buckingham Palace, so we can't we can't do that yet, can we? Ah, one moment, please. Right. Okay. Oh, and there's, there's oh, I'm I often miss these. Now, apologies if you ever leave notes on YouTube, because the show is on YouTube as well. Then I sometimes I miss those. You're better off to send an email to um or, or use a Facebook message or an email me email to Chris at UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. Right? I, I I come kind of I should check them, but I forget. Three days ago, half leg wax. <laughs> That's a great. <laughs> What a strange name that is. Half Legwex commented, you really made me laugh, Quiz. That entire story about using jazz hands instead of clapping. Fantastically funny. I was in tears of laughter. Well, I'd be in tears of laughter if it wasn't true. Did you miss that show the other day, boys and girls? You see, so you're missing shows now. If you miss shows, you won't know what I'm talking about. I'm not telling you again. We haven't got time. We've got to do the birthdays. Here we go. Happy birthday, dear James, Trinity, Georgina, Dola and Andy. Happy birthday to you. Enjoy your birthday, boys and girls, wherever you're going. Uh, finally today, any more messages? I'll do last messages if there are in any. Uh, Jackie Can says, you do make me laugh. That's what it's all about, Jackie. I'll make them laugh and you make them sing, darling. Jackie Can top entertainer she does um da, 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 da. oh can't remember her name now oh jackie i can't remember the w woman's name oh god well jackie sings her own her own um she sings whatever but she particularly does a tribute act oh i can't remember the name alison moye alison moye that's it jackie does alison moyet Moyette. Why do, Why isn't it said Moyette? Why is it Moyet and not Moyette? Hmm. Um, Kevin says, I uh, make your day. I do try. Darren says, what time is the show normally? Ah, not scheduled, Darren. I do them as and when. OK, sometimes in the morning, sometimes in the afternoon, sometimes in the evening. Now, there is a big argument for saying, well, you should do it at the same time every day. Then people know you're there. But. On the other hand, doing them at different times of day, you pick up different people. You know, some people can't watch in the morning, some people can't watch in the evening, some people can't watch in the daytime. So it kind of works both ways. I think there is a subscribe button somewhere, Darren. So if you click, I, I don't know where it is because obviously I'm doing the show, but there's a subscribe button there somewhere. If you click that, then whenever I do a show, or it might be a follow me. If you follow me, I think it might be a follow me. It's something on there, but you, you need to look for it while I'm still doing the show. <laughs> OK, if you click that, then whenever I do a show, you get a little beep beep on your phone or something. And say, Hello, there's a show happening now. So you don't miss any then. All right. I'm not quite sure. Perhaps Gustav. Oh, there you go. There, oh, thank you, Darren. So there's a subscribe button somewhere. You'll probably get a little, little subscription thing every time there's a live show now. All right, darling. Jackie says, oh, it's a French name, Alison Moyet. That's why the T isn't pronounced. Alison Moyet. I say Moyet. Moyet. Well, that's nearly it today. Um, the little secret is, please wish me luck today. I've got to take the cat into the vet at um, half past 12. Um, she's, uh, I have, a, if, if, if you don't watch the show very often, uh, you won't know. I have a very elderly cat. She's 18 years old now. She spends most of her life walking around in circles to the left all the time, to the left, to the left, to the left. Uh, she's very, very incontinent now. The whole of the kitchen floor has been for some weeks now covered in newspaper and you have to keep changing that. It's not too bad. Uh, but really, um, she's got, she's had this growth on her chin for some years now it's very very slow growing but over the last few weeks i've noticed it's got much bigger and i think it's now gone into her mouth um so so uh so please wish me um uh luck today at the vet so half past 12 is vet time so if you do pray in and all that sort of stuff i would appreciate a prayer or two for katie the cat and you know um i will go into the vet and it will be for the cat's 
benefit. Not for my benefit, whatever's best for her. Might come out and say, oh, yeah, it's just, just, a, just a bit of an infection. Um, she's not in any pain or anything like that, in which case she comes straight home. You know, I don't think it's going to be that. But you never know. So please, fingers crossed. And um, yeah, she's a, a special cat, especially because she was my mum's cat. And when uh, when when mum uh, when mum died, uh, I took her on. You see, and she's been with me ever since. So please, a couple of little prayers for my cat. And whichever way it goes, whatever's best for the cat will, is what will happen. Okay, uh, that's it today. Thank you very much, boys and girls. It's been a pleasure uh, talking to you as always on this Thursday. I'll let you know about the cat uh, and um, uh, in the next show, or maybe uh, well, we'll see how we do. I might even do a, a little show. A, a, a very quick show this afternoon to tell you that she's all right or or otherwise, okay? Have a nice day and thanks for watching and listening. I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye now.